Hi, I'm Bonnie Rose. Hi, I'm Stephen S. Miller, a.k.a. Mama Rose. And we're here talking with the Roses. With our guest, Zachary Booth. Welcome to the show, Zachary. Thank you so much. It's lovely to be here. Hi, Zach. So let's get started. So what has inspired you and when did you know that you really wanted to be an actor for life? Wow. Uh, I, I love this question because I don't have like a specific moment that comes to my mind, but I always knew that I enjoyed the community in the arts. I knew that I enjoyed the attention that I got on stage, the applause, the laughter, all that good stuff. It two things happened. One, my brother went to college for theater at Emerson and he's a couple years older than me. And it was at that moment that I realized that this was an option in terms of a course of study or something that you could do. And up to that point in my life, I was really also an academic. Like I loved math, I loved science. I did really well in school. And I said to my dad, I think I wanna pursue theater. And he said, okay. In his mind, I'm sure he's thinking like, great, you know, I've got two sons and both of them want to go to theater school, right? Because he was in construction and went to engineering school. Like he was a very bright man. And he was like, oh, great. So he said to me, you can go, but I want you to do a, a pre-college program first. You know, he just, he was the kind of guy, if he wasn't sure about something, he'd just ask a friend. And he asked one of his friends and his friend said, my daughter went to this program at Carnegie Mellon. It was in the summer. See if you can get him in. He got me in and I spent the summer at Carnegie Mellon. And it was the first time I actually studied acting. I got to use that academic part of my brain that I loved. And I got to apply it to this passion that I had. And I was doing scene study and understanding that it wasn't just about like what my first instincts were that I could actually analyze and understand text and in improve. And that's when I really think I decided that this is what I wanted to take a crack at. And as far as when I decided for the rest of my life, like who knows, you know, right, right, <laughs> just right. haven't been chosen yet. That's for today. Yeah. So in your career, what would be the turning point so far um, to let's say where you thought, wow, I'm on the next level. Was it damages, Glenn Close son, or was it keep the lights on, which was a smash hit on the indie circuit, which won seven awards and 10 nominations. I, I mean, and they've done so much. I and mean, I've seen you on Broadway and you and I have even done a, a, a small independent. So which one was that or at what point? Well, I'm glad you brought up the shirt maker because we did work together on that and you were incredible. And it was so much fun to get to be opposite somebody that I share so much with, so much about the work that we do is like connecting with other humans and to get to look into your eyes I mean I love this woman and you're just giving me so much and I just felt so safe and taken care of so I'm glad you brought that up um the turning point it's I find this business of course to be really humbling and I say this business right because that's that's what it is I've thought so many times in the 15 years that I've been doing this that I I this is it this is the moment, never, the offers are going to flood in. I'm never going to stop working, you know, and then you sort of hit one of those dips and you don't work as much. And so I don't know that I ever really felt like at all clicked, but you picked up on that show damages. You know, I, I didn't realize what a gold mine I stepped into when I got that role. I was a little naive, a little ignorant. I hadn't really done my research and I, I just knew that it was to, this role was to play Glenn's son. And I went in and I auditioned and then they were like, you have to come out to the, the studio and meet her and audition with her. And that was the first time I'd had that experience. And I was like, oh, this is a little weird. This is different. And then I, I read with her and I got the part and I called a friend of mine and I just sort of casually mentioned to him that I'd gotten some part in some show that Glenn Close and he was like, damages you you're going to be in that show i've been trying to get i've been paying that's on my dvr you know tivo this was a little while ago but uh anyway i think that moment was when i realized i was caught up in something bigger than i imagined now what routines do you do to keep yourself going 
That's a great question, Stephen, because I just was saying, right, there's so much, of, especially in these dips, there's so much downtime. And, you know, I am the kind of person, it sounds crazy, but like, I love doing activities where there's a result. And I feel like in, in the performing arts, very rarely do you get to see an immediate result. So I love hobbies, things as simple as like cleaning dishes and cleaning the house because I'm like, oh, look, there was a dirty dish and now it's a clean dish. And I did that, you know, I like stuff like that. Um, I, you know, I love, uh, I've, I've been taking a meditation class for years. So I have a practice that I do in the morning that I really love. Um, I, I craft a little bit. I got into that a couple of years ago. I did some cross stitching and some needlepoint and like every cliche possible during this pandemic situation. You know, I'm baking bread, I like all of the things. I'm just trying them all. Um, so that's a bit of a mess of an answer, but you know, I, I, I like to try to find tasks that I can complete that sort of use a different part of my brain. And for me, that's like crafting and cleaning and, and that sort of stuff. Oh, I love it. I love it. And as a young and extremely talented actor yourself, what advice would you have for someone who's just starting out? Oh, that was very sweet of you to say that. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't often feel that the, that the like, this is the journey talk is, is really authentic coming out of my mouth because I can't quite articulate how I got to a place where I was working regularly. But what I did do, what I think was the thing I did that, that was the, the best idea that I had, and it didn't even come from myself, it was again from my dad, was just to get involved in a community. There's a theater school in, in New York City called the Barrow Group. And I, uh, right out of college, had gotten a connection there through a friend who I worked with at a summer stock theater. And she got me a job as an assistant stage manager on a production at the Barrow Group. And they also have a school there. And as part of my payment, I got some classes and I started taking classes there. And I'm not sure if it's what I learned in the classes or what I learned, in, but I know the fact that I had a community, that I wasn't alone, and that there was a place where I could go and practice and learn was really important to me. I had that in college, but honestly, emotionally, I wasn't mature enough to really take advantage of it. It wasn't until I got there that I was just like swept up into the fast paced New York City world and, you know, we're like spending 16 hour days at the theater and doing all this. And I was like, this is it. And that foundation is really what I think a lot of my work has been built on. Hmm. That's great. And I agree with you that it is a community. Um, do you have any up and coming projects that you want to talk with <laughs> us about? Talking with the roses? <laughs> oh, you know, I like, you know, there's talking and then there's talking. And I know you, you two like to talk. Sure. <laughs> I, you know, I was about to go into a job in March. I was going to uh, take over a role in, in a Broadway show. And I'm being like a little coy about it just because who knows what's going to happen. You know, there's, there, right, exactly. We, you know, we, the show believes that it's going to come back. And I'm hoping that that means they're going to come back with me. But you never know. Um, but that was that was really what I was about to start doing. Uh, I was going to be back on Broadway, which I was really excited about, and um, and we'll see. You know, hopefully, it'll happen. If not, you know, television and film is slowly starting to happen, mm -hmm. and then unhappen, and then happen, and then un. So you know, the the work is there, and and I think we're going to see a big production boon as soon as this vaccine has been uh, distributed and, and people can safely get back to work. And if it's not safe, I'm happy to wait. Absolutely. Totally agree with you. On that note, we just want to thank you so much for being with us today, Zachary Booth. <laughs> thank you. I love you, Bonnie, Stephen. So happy to meet you and look forward to being friends with you for a long time. And uh, this has really been a treat. So thank you very much. Thank you. You have been talking with the roses. See you next time.